Hey guys, welcome back. If you have been subscribed for a long time, or if you have just seen the video, you will recognize this area. Might be changed up a little, um, a lot actually. And um, I'm making a remake of this because the technique that I used a long time ago, I'll link the, <laughs> I'll link the description to that old video, um, I mean I'll link the video in the description to that old video. But, um, I wasn't really good at command blocks back then, like, at all. So, I made a remake of this. Um, you'll see it now, I'll show it off. And, um, you'll see it's a lot more responsive. Um, also, if you don't want to do this exactly, what I'm showing off, it will give you a lot of insights and tips if you're new to command blocks. Um, also, if you're a little experienced, you have to be a little experienced to understand this video. But, um, yeah, so let's start this off. Just gonna set my reset to 1, and I'll show you what that does a little later. So, first of all, say so start off by moving around with the WASD keys with the Telver command instead of the SAY command, which I did a year ago. So, if I move around, there we go. It says now use the space bar to jump. And it says jump three times. So, one, two, three. There we go. That was this great. Now go meet Sensei Zai at the top of the tower to start your training. So I'm just going to go up, and then you'll see he is here. And said, hello, great here. I'm Sensei Zai, and our village needs your help. But before we begin talking about our village's problems, we must first make sure you're up for the task. Meet me at the training ground. So if I just go down the ladder... As you can see, he's here. I'm just go up to him. It says, go take the sword from the weapon stand. So if I go up to the sword, see how I take it off the weapon stand there. It says, this is the great adventurous sword. Use, um, kill three dummies with it. So, one, two. Now, before you go saying these are Dragnos, this is, uh, dummies. Yes, they are. And I'm just using them in the concept because it fits well with the whole adventure map thing. And also, uh, I've added like a little thing where you can actually hit them with the sword to destroy them. So yeah, um, that's the reason why these are here. So now it says, now go, now go grab um, the Great Adventurer's Bow and kill three dummies with it. Three arrows equals one kill. Um, these bows were used by our ancestors during the time of war. This is the only one that was recovered and passed down by many generations. So as you can see, it's got infinity and power. Um, this is a great adventure's arrow. <laughs> Bit cliche, but I mean, it fits the whole setting. So there we go. One, two, three. And you also can see on the side of my screen, it's, I'm on step six now. When I finish this, uh, one, two, three. It says now, um, step seven. It says you're definitely prepared, you're definitely skilled and are prepared to save our village. Meet me at the top of my tower when you're done down here. So, um, players can carry on um, getting XP or something, um, and then when they're done, they'll go meet him at the top of the tower. So, if I go up, as you can see, he is now here, and it says, Here is the Adventurer's Medal. It is only passed down to two heroes. Just start, just start by talking um, to some town folk for more information about our problem, the way out is just through that tunnel over there. So, that's about it, and as you can see, he's not here anymore. I'm actually teleporting him around, I'm not just summoning in a new one. So, then players will carry on the adventure through the tunnel. So, um, we just pop around to the command blocks. Let's clear my inventory. There we go. Um, each color represents, um, progress, so blue will be when your progress is 1, and then this is 2, 3, 4, 5, and black is, um, wait, no, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, we'll lead up to how it got to 7, I think it's actually, this, oh yeah, right, if this puts it up to 2, so this would be actually 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, um, and then these here are the dummies, 
as you can see, I've also got this here, and um, this is the reset, so basically this tests if my reset score was 1, if that's true it will put a rest and block here, uh oh, <laughs> and it will reset all my scores and my progress and everything. So if I just TP at P, um, 20 blocks up maybe, okay, 50, there we go. So, these two command blocks here are just the clock. So, we usually, what I did, um, we're going to start on this side and move on to the next step. This be, might be a long video, not sure, probably will be. So, I think I've forgotten a bit of how these things work, but I should be able to figure out where to go next. So, if we start off here, um, let's actually start off by looking at these scoreboards. So, if we go scoreboard, objectives, list, here's all the score, scoreboards I've got. Um, Zai just helps, um, just, I just set, um, Sensei Zai's Zai score to 1, so I can select him whenever I need to, because you can't select entities with a space in their name, so I just got that. Then we've got sword, which tests if you're holding a diamond sword. Um, D error is dummy error, and that is used for every time you kill a dummy with a, with a bow. Um, dialogue basically is like progress. Um, it helps me move down the clock. Um, we can move on to progress, which is just the sidebar, basically, and also helps me move up the clock. Progress and dialogue are the main things we use in our um, selectors. Then we've got reset, which is what I just explained there. D sword um, is when you kill the dummy with a sword, it will add one, or just kill the dummy in general. But it will be a sword, you'll understand why now. Bow is when it just tests if a bow is selected. D timer is dialogue timer. No, oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Skype. Um, just see where we're going now. Oh yeah, dialogue timer. I've used that once in this whole system. Walk will just um, test if you walk one centimeter, and jump is when you jump. Okay. Let me just put me on Do Not Disturb. Right, so, let's start. Um, first of all, what I meant by you need to have some insight, you need to know how scoreboards work, you need to know how clocks work and stuff. If you don't know how to do this, maybe if you watch my first one, which was like half an hour long, when I was not that good, you might be able to understand what I'm doing because I'll was probably the same level as you, or a bit lower, I don't know. So again, look in the description for that. So, the first thing we are doing is if um, a player, we are going to set all players, all players who have got a progress score of 1, and their walk is 500, we're going to set their dialogue to 2, that's not the first one actually, yeah. So, we're going to execute all players who's got a dialogue of zero, and that happens when we reset the player's score. And we're going to tell Raw um, start off by moving with the WSD keys, and then we're going to set all players who's got a dialogue of zero, we're going to set it to one, immediately after this one is played. So it only happens once. I can quickly, qu <laughs> sorry, quickly demonstrate that. There we go. Um, whoops, <laughs> always puts me like that. So, there we go, and as you can see, it just went once. So now, our dialogue score is 1, as you can see. And I'm Alex right now, because I don't have access to internet, um, it went down. So hopefully it comes up soon, so I can upload this video. So, once that happens, then, then we move on to here. Um, if players have a score... Uh, walk f um, 500 and the progress is 1, we are going to set the dialogue to 2. <laughs> Sorry. And <laughs> a lot of talking. 
And when dialogue is two, oh, sorry. And also, if they've got walk one, we're going to set their progress to two. So it just says it on the sidebar. If we move on now, I think it should be here. Yeah. So if the dialogue is two, we are just going to tell Raw at a um, use the space bar, jump three times. And we're going to immediately set it to three after that. So again, it only plays once. And we're going to test for players who's got a jump score of three. Um, and if that's true, we're going to set the dialogue to four and also set their progress to three. When the dialogue is four, we can now say this. So when the dialogue is four, it's going to say great. Um, go up the tower to start your training. And it's going to set the dialogue to five immediately. So it plays once. Then we're going to execute um, at the villager with Zyman 1, which means we are going to execute all entities that's got the sky, a Zy score. So basically it just sends a Zy at the top of the tower. And from him, we are going to execute all players that's got a score of progress 3 within a radius of 2 of him. And if the player with progress 3 is within a radius of 2 um, of him, we are going to set all players' dialogue to 6 and also set their progress to 4. So when dialogue... Oh wait. Dialogue is 6. Here we go. So we are going to move here. So when players have um, progress 4 and... Yeah, just progress 4, which happens when you're close to Zinsa's eye, it will set all players... Um, who's got a score D timer 160 and under, we're going to add 1 to the D timer, which means it will stop at 161. And basically we use that for timings between dialogue, which we use at the top of the tower. If you remember, it, um, it said, um, we can just remember, we can just actually check. Oh yeah, um, we have to make sure you're up for the task. And then quite a while later, it said we'd be at the training grounds. So... How that worked is um, we're going to tell Raw all players has got a dialogue score of 6, which we set when we were close to Sensor's Eye with Progress 3. Um, if their dialogue is 6 and their D timer is 1, so the minute the D timer starts, it's going to say, Hello, Great Hero, I'm Sensor's Eye. Then here, if your dialogue is 6, okay. And your D timer is 159, so just before the D timer is going to stop, it's going to say, meet me at the training grounds. So there's about a 8 second gap um, between the up for the task and meet me at the training grounds. There's an 8 second gap. And here, if your dialogue is 6 and your D timer is 159, it's going to set the dialogue to 7. So straight after this meet me at the training grounds happens, it's going to set dialogue to 7, which will stop it from saying meet me at the training grounds. And it will TP um, Sensei's eye down to the ground, only if the player is coming down the ladder. So I can actually go demonstrate that. If I can just quickly set my reset to 1, quickly do everything, jump... And then go up to the tower. Sorry if I'm a bit out of breath. I'll also show you the um, sounds, how I did that. So if I look up, you'll see that he teleports. The minute I went down the ladder, now he is over there. So, oh, whoops, I'm in game mode zero now. So let's go ahead and carry on. Um, so now our progress is 4, our dialogue is 7, and Sensei's eye is down there. So now we're going to move on to the pink section. Um, we're going to execute Sensei's eye. Um, if he's at x equals 1, 65z equals 4. If he's there within a radius of 1, so basically where he's standing now, we're going to execute from that location. We're going to do another execute on all players who's got progress 4 and their dialogue is 7 um, with it in a rate of 2. 
So if, if that player is within a radius 2 of sensei Zai, we will set their dialogue to 8, and same thing, all the same selectors, will set their progress to 5. Now, um, let's just find the next thing. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, here we go. So this is what happens next. It's going to execute all players with dialog 8. It's going to tell Raw at a um, go take the sword from the weapon stand and then set it to 9 so it only says it once. And then um, when... Let me just quickly find the next command. So yeah. So if players are standing on the ander side by the weapon stand, um, they di and their dialogue is 9, and also their progress is 5, then it will set their dialogue to um, 10. Wait, sorry, we were, <laughs> we were here. If it's 9, and they're at the ander side, it will give them a diamond sword um, with sharpness 5, and and it's named the Great Adventure Sword. And then, just look around, then we'll set the dialogue to 10 straight after that because it first activates this and then um, this. So you will get the sword. And then down here, when I decided to add the feature, it will kill the item there, um, just down the clock. Because I didn't actually have the feature when building it, so I didn't think about it. So basically the sword came out of thin air, but now it actually kills the item. So now, if we move on... Let's see, dialogue 10... Okay, <laughs> sorry about this. Uh, oh yeah. Also, let, let's just go back to the green part quicks. Um, to play the sounds, all I did was um, test if the dialogue was 8. Um, if it was, then it would play mobdidvillager.idle with a pitch of 0. And also if they had a dialogue 6 and their D timer was 1, it would play it again. And also if the D timer was 158, um, and the dialogue was 6 would also play it. So basically it would play it with the... I would basically do the exact same selectors as what we had up here with the execute, and I just put it into a um, play sound command. So that's pretty easy. So now, let me just try to find the next one. Oh yeah. So, when players go get the sword, it will set their dialogue to 10, right? And then the minute they get the sword, we're going to play sound um, the mob villager dot idle to all players with dialogue 10. And we'll also say, um, this is the great adventurous sword, um, use it to kill three dummies, and then here. So it's going to play sound, um, since it's, it's going to speak, and then it's going to set dialogue to 11, so that only happens once. So that's everything to do with the pink. So now our dialogue is 11. I think we are going to move on to the dummies now. So let me explain to you how this works. How these work. Um, let me just... Okay, so this is a clock, just a set block clock. And as you can see, there's hay bales on top of these command blocks, and basically they're doing a test for blocks um, from 1 up to 2 up. It's going to compare it to the hay bales um, over there, each one. And just note that each one of these systems have different coordinates to each one, so you'll just have to change that for each one. And if they are not the same, because right now they are the same, so it's on, so if you break one of the hay bales over there, it will, this will turn off, this will turn on, and we'll set block, a redstone block, um, right over here. When that happens, it will power all of these outputs, and it also take away the redstone block. 
So, as you can see, this repeat is locked, which means it will never turn on. And I'll show you why I've done that now. Um, so, it will fill and destroy the hay bales, um, the two hay bales, first. Then it will kill all arrows um, within a radius of three around the hay bale. It will um, set game rule do tell jobs to false. And, um, whoops, and will also summon an XP orb just um, away, just a little bit away from the hay bales. And then, um, eight ticks later, it will fill hay bale, the hay bales back. It will put game rule do tell drops to true and add one to all players D, D sword if they've got progress five and sword equaling one and we explain that so if we just go look at that now over here um, if players are holding a diamond sword we're going to set their sword to one otherwise just set it to zero so we're constantly setting it to zero and straight after that we're setting it to one so basically that creates something like this um, so if I just go scoreboard, objectives, set display, sidebar, um, sword, as you can see when I hold it, it's set to 1, and when I unhold it or discard it, it will set to 0. So when I hold it, basically it's going to set it to 0 and set it to 1, but it's, but with how the way Minecraft um, works, it will just keep it at 1. I have no idea why this happens, but if you had to swap them around, it doesn't work, so... Yeah, that's it's a bit weird. <laughs> so yeah, but so if they're holding a sword, um, then it will only um, add one to the D sword, not set it, and they progress five, and um, yeah. So the only way that this will work is if players have progress of six, and I'll show you um, when that happens. So when players have a progress of six, this will turn off. And then players can get a D arrow of 1 if their bow is equal to 1. And that's all these other commands do. They just test if players are having, I mean, holding a bow. So that's how D sword gets added. So now if we just go back. So we're going to set all players. It's got a progress of 5 and their D sword is 3 or over. We're going to set the dialogue to 12. And the same selector, and then we're just going to set their progress to 6, and then when progress is set to 6, then this will turn off. We'll see that um, a little later. So, um, if player's progress is 12, we are going to first say um, this... Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> now I'll go grab the Great Adventurer's bow um, um, and kill three dummies with it. And then straight under it will say um, three arrows equals one kill. And then straight after those play, then we are going to set all players with dialogue 12 to 13. So it only plays once. Um, and we'll go look at these now. Um, just looking at what these are. Okay, so players will get the score of dialogue 14 if they are standing on the andesite, their progress is 6, and their dialogue is 13. So straight after they get the D sword of 3, and then they go grab the bow. Then they'll have a dialogue of 14. And when dialogue is 14, it will first give players a enchanted bow with infinity and power. It will give them an enchanted arrow that doesn't really have any enchantments. And uh, we just found the whole story thing um, here. And we'll also um, say the thing that's passed down by many generations. 
Um, and then, if players have a dialogue of 14, we'll just set it to 15. And then, um, before we actually set it to 15, then we'll do the play sound, and then set it to 15. So, he'll say that. And now our dialogue is 15, we have the enchanted bow. So now we move on to the black area. Oh, and also, <laughs> also we kill the um, item when your dialogue's 14, when you actually go get the bow. So, as you can see, another late added feature. So it's split from the rest. So when you have a D arrow of 3, um, we're going to set dialogue to 16. We're also going to set the progress to 7. So as you can see, um, this will be unlocked. So if I just go scoreboard, players, set, microspaces, progress to 6. Now when... Oh, actually, I forgot to explain one thing. I'll show you now. <laughs> show you now. <laughs> It will actually add one to D arrow if you're holding a bow. Basically, it's going to test four arrows at these coordinates within a radius of one, and they have to be in ground. And every time one arrow is inside the hay bale, it will add one to the output. So if one arrow is in, this will be powered. If two are in, this will be powered. And if three are in, this will power. And then do everything again, plus adding one to D arrow. So. Um, when that happens, when you have DR1 and progress 6, your dialogue will be set to 16, your progress will be set to 7. When your dialogue is 16, you'll say, meet me at the tower, um, you, you're prepared and stuff. And um, so I'll say that. Also, probably do a play sound here. So I'll do a play sound of mob.villager.idle. And I'll show you what that is now. Let me just quickly find the next thing. I think it's this command. No. <laughs> it's quite hard to find, sorry. Um, is this it? Okay, well, basically... Oh, yeah. If your dialogue is 16, it will set your dialogue to 17, which will only say it once, as we've said before. Now we move on to the next command, which will TP, I mean, it will execute all players who's got a dialogue of seven. Oh, that's a mistake. Dialogue min seven. <laughs> okay, that should be, uh, not dialogue, not seven, sorry, dialogue 17. So if players have dialogue of 17, then I'm going to test if they are up the ladder a little. And if they are, then I'm just going to TP um, Sensei's eye back up into his tower. And then... Um, um, <laughs> wait. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. So he's going to be back up into his tower when you start climbing up the ladder. And when you actually get there, we are going to execute from Sensei's eye while he's up at his tower. Then we're going to test for a player within a radius or two of him that's got progress 7 and dialogue 17. Um, if that's true, we are going to set his dialogue, set the player's dialogue to 18. And if the player's dialogue is 18, we're going to do a play sound mob.villager.idle. And um, let's just try to find it. Oh yeah, then we are going to give all players one diamond that's, in, that's got an enchanted effect called the Great Adventures Medal, and the law is medal passed down to true heroes. And then um, he's going to say his thing, um, go talk to town folk and stuff. Then we're just going to set his dialogue to 19, so he only does all that once. And that is the whole thing. Now, as you can see, it's um, really improved um, from my old design. I'll put a picture on screen now of what my old one looked like. And um, this is a lot more compact, and um, it's even got a reset, instead of like the stupid little button. And you can see the potential with this. You can basically just carry on just um, with the dialogues and the progress, and just extend the clock, make it longer, and build onto it, um, do more quests, and build more machines to connect it onto the clock. 
um, for like um, with the scoreboard, you can add more scoreboards, do more creative things, and um, yeah. So if you've learned anything from this video, maybe stuff you didn't know, maybe techniques um, with the scoreboard commands, um, this happened because of how many times I hit the reset without actually coming to pick these up. Um, so yeah, if you learned anything and um, you also enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all next time. Thank you.